This is the first of several videos I want to make uh, showing graphing examples. So these examples have many steps. So I'll only be able to do one example in this video. So first, let's think about what our strategy is going to be. There's really uh, a lot of steps here and I try to remember them using these letters so it has a kind of a word, disail C. Uh, and I break them up into three parts. The dis part is domain intercepts and symmetry. The A part is asymptotes. And ILC is in intervals of increase and decrease, uh, local max and min, and the concavity. And there's really three categories. The first category, the domain, intercepts, and symmetry, that's really information we know from algebra. And then the last three are from calculus, the increase and decrease, and the local max and min, they come from the first derivative. We may use the second derivative test for the local max and min, and then the concavity comes from the second derivative. And then the asymptotes, we may use either algebra or uh, calculus or both to determine the asymptotes. So let's look at our first example. It's a rational function, y equals x squared minus four over x squared plus 12. When I look at the domain, well, the denominator can never be zero. It's a number squared and then you add 12. Smallest it can ever be is 12. So the domain is all real numbers. For the intercepts, well, if uh, x is zero, I'll be left with y equals negative one third. And if y equals zero, remember a fraction can only be zero when the top is zero and the bottom is not zero. And that happens when x is plus or minus two. So our intercepts, x-intercepts are two comma zero and negative two comma zero. An important reminder, intercepts are points. So it's important when we go through all of this information that if something is a point, we write it as a point. If it's just a number, we write it as a number. If it's the equation of a line, we write it as an equation of a line. So for oh, the symmetry is even, I only have even powers of x. Uh, for the asymptotes, there's no vertical asymptotes. There's no way I can have a vertical asymptote because the denominator can never be zero. For horizontal asymptotes, I need to calculate the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared minus four over x squared plus 12. Or I could use knowledge from algebra if I remember. But if I forgot, this is an easy limit to calculate. We'll multiply top and bottom by one over x squared. And then I'll be left with the limit as x approaches infinity of one minus four over x squared all over one plus 12 over x squared. And as uh, x approaches infinity, the four over x squared goes to zero, the 12 over x squared goes to zero, and so I'll be left with one as the limit. Now that's the one is a number. That's not an asymptote. The asymptote is an equation. Y equals one. All right, to calculate the intervals of increase and decrease, we'll need to calculate the first derivative. I'm using the quotient rule. Derivative of the first is two X. I mean, the first, the top is two X times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom, which is also 2x, times the top all over the bottom squared. You can go ahead and remove parentheses and collect like terms in the numerator. 
that simplifies to just 32x in the numerator. And if I set that equal to zero, that can only be zero when x equals zero. So that's our only critical number here is x equals zero. And the derivative is zero when x equals zero. So I'm gonna make a number line, zero is my critical number. And since the denominator in the expression for the first derivative is always positive, I only need to look at the sign of the numerator. And when the numerator, uh, when x is negative, the first derivative is negative. When x is positive, the first derivative is positive. And so that tells me that we are increasing, the curve is increasing for positive values of x. So on zero to infinity, it's decreasing on the negative x values from negative infinity to zero. So I'm running out of space. So let me summarize what the information we've got so far. Oh, one more thing. Our local min occurs when x equals zero. It has to be a local min because I'm decreasing then increasing. So that means at uh, x equals zero, there must be a local min and the min value is negative one third. It happens to be the y intercept. So as I was saying, I want to uh, summarize all the information that we have so far before I calculate the concavity. Remember for the concavity, I need to calculate the second derivative. So I have my expression for the first derivative over here. I'll have to use the quotient rule. And I just took the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom. When I take the derivative of the bottom, I have to remember to use the chain rule. The derivative of the inside x squared plus 12 is just 2x. And then I multiply that times the top all over the bottom squared. Now I can simplify this. One simplification I can see is that there is a common factor of x squared plus 12. So if I factor that out and reduce the fraction, now I can still do some further simplifications. I'll remove the parentheses and collect the like terms, and then set that equal to zero. And I can solve that by setting the denominator equal to zero, that gives me x squared equals 384 over 96, which turns out to reduce to four. So x equals plus or minus two. Those are the x values where the concavity might change. So let me go ahead and rewrite the second derivative in factored form. So the negative 96 x squared plus 384, I can factor out negative 96, that'll give me x squared plus four, and then x squared plus four can be factored as x plus two times x minus two. So I draw a number line, I put in the values where the concavity is zero, and then, or the second derivative is zero, and then I consider each of these three intervals. I put a test point in, I say if I have like negative three, what sign will I get for the second derivative? Well, negative 96 is always negative. The bottom is always positive. And so I'm gonna have a, a negative times a negative times a negative, and that's going to give me a negative. So then moving on to the next interval, if I put in zero, I'll have negative times positive times negative. That's gonna give me a positive. And then in the final interval, I'll wind up with negatives again. So at x equals negative two and x equals two, the concavity changes. I go from concave down to concave up at negative two, from concave up to concave down at positive two. So my inflection points are at uh, plus or minus two and at those values y equals zero. So my, it turns out, this is just coincidence for this problem that 
all of my intercepts are actually important numbers. My y-intercept is a local min, and my x-intercepts turn out to be inflection points. So let's sketch the graph. I am uh, going to use three squares on the vertical axis, on the y-axis, to represent one unit. Why? Because I'm looking at my intercepts, and I see I have a negative one-third. So to help me plot negative one-third, uh, I'll go ahead and make three squares per unit. So one square would represent one-third. And then on the x-axis, uh, just to spread things out a little bit, I'll use two squares to represent one unit. So let me go ahead and draw in my horizontal uh, asymptote, the y equals 1. Let me go ahead and plot my intercepts, which happen to be my local min, and also my inflection points. Let's use the information about the concavity in the local max, local min. I know that in the middle I'm going to be concave up, and in fact I'll have a local min on the uh, y-axis. I'll be concave down, and moreover, not only am I concave down, I know I have to pass through this point, and I know that I have to get close to, as I go away from zero, I have to get closer and closer to my asymptote. So this is a concave down. This side is tending to point towards the uh, x-intercept, and the other side is getting close to the asymptote. And then, uh, so far this is good. I haven't had to use the symmetry, but uh, that should help me too, that this should wind up being a symmetric with respect to the y-axis. It's an even function. And so now um, I'll just do my best to, to kind of connect all that information together, draw a smooth curve through it, and there is my graph.